it's 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 Hello everyone and welcome to a Christmas special of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. The series where I recreate Christmas crafts from Pinterest without any instructions. Because that's what Santa would want. And I've been, I've been a good boy this year. I haven't, I've been a very bad, bad, bad boy. <laughs> Imagine if Santa was real and he totally came down and told you you've been a bad boy. As like obviously a grown person or a bad girl as a grown person. How ridiculous would that be? It would sound like a bit sexy, wouldn't it? As if he's gonna get like the... Whip out. It's just where my mind went there. I'm just thinking out loud. Let's find some Christmas crafts to make. Okay, so the first Christmas craft project I want to try is this very upscale, very fancy and sophisticated dried orange wreath. And I've made a lot of wreaths in the past, but this one definitely seems more upmarket than the past wreaths that I've made. Just seems very adult, very unlike me. But I think it's quite nice and I think I can do it. Fingers crossed. The second craft project I'm thinking about is this little milk bottle with like a very cute winter scene in it. And I think it's absolutely adorable. I think it'll be relatively easy to make. It's kind of given me the fairy teacup vibes, but in a milk bottle. And I love the fairy teacup, so I should in theory really enjoy the milk bottle. The next one that I want to try is this Grinch hand. And I'm not entirely sure what kind of the purpose of this decoration is. Like, I don't know where you would put it. But I suppose they've hung it on a wall, but it just seems a bit out of place. I feel like this needs to be in amongst something else. You need to kind of create or build like a scene around it. But I still think it's quite nice. It's very simple, very minimal, which is a bit gross, but it's effective and you know, that's, that's, that's nice, I suppose. But I do like the Grinch. Is the Grinch on this one? No. Who's that? Oh, it's Freddy Krueger, isn't it? It's not the Grinch. I like how we go from Grinch to Freddy Krueger. You are all my children now. I also fancy making this upcycled ball and pin into a snowman decoration. And I think this looks super cool. I think this one will be quite expensive because I'm pretty sure used or even new ball and pins. They're not cheap. They're quite expensive for some reason. Even though they're just a bit of wood, I don't understand why they're so expensive for. I've shopped around because I wanted to do something with ball and pins in a previous life. And yeah, they were really expensive. So I think this one's going to hit my wallet hard, but I think it's going to be worth it. I think it's very cute. And I think we'll also try a very simple one, which is this little snowy cupcake decoration thing. I'm not entirely sure what kind of cake it is, but I think it's Christmas themed because it's in front of a Christmas tree. And I don't, I don't think it's actually food. I think it's made from craft materials. I'm sure it's like glitter and sparkles and stuff. <laughs> Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! And I think that'll do it for all the Christmas crafts in today's episode. I think I've got a good, good range. I don't think there's a huge potential for a lot to go wrong. But you just never know with these episodes, do you? You never know. You never know with me full stop. Lots can go wrong, or nothing can go wrong. It's very rare nothing goes wrong, though. It's weird, that, isn't it? But I'll see you in a few weeks, and we get some Christmas crafts sorted. Oh, yeah, Christmas. Love Christmas. I don't, actually. I don't like Christmas at all. I prefer Halloween. I can't be asked with Christmas this year. I've just realised. I really can't be bothered. Maybe these Christmas crafts will change my mind and bring me some Christmas joy. I need Santa to put his joy inside of us. Filthy, Anthony. Filthy. You dirty. It's supposed to be a family-friendly channel, and you just turn it into filthy disgusting. Okay, I'm finally back, and I thought we would start off with one that I've found incredibly hard for some reason. It's given us quite a lot of grief, and that's going to be the Grinch hand. It's caused us a lot of pain. Now, when I was thinking about how to make the... The kind of like hand bit that like bends around because I wasn't quite sure how they'd done it. I was initially thinking form. I think form would be an obvious idea, but then I was thinking... If you think about like a pool noodle, that kind of form, it's just gonna bounce back, isn't it? So it didn't really make any sense. So my idea was to use this corrugated paper cardboard stuff and roll that up into one tube and hot glue it together. Then cut a second piece down to a much smaller size and do exactly the same again, roll it up and hot glue it together. And then I wasn't really sure what to do at this point when I had two pieces. I obviously need to attach them, but I wanted to attach them so that it didn't look weird and messy. So I decided to just hot glue some more of this corrugated cardboard to both of these pieces and kind of trim it down and just kind of like hope for the best. Just, I don't know, I, I think I just like guessed and just hoped that it would magically look how I thought it was going to look. And after I'd wrestled with that for a while, it was looking a little bit like this. And I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't look like how I wanted it to look, but it's too late, I've made it, and I'm just gonna have to go with it. Now in their original idea, they used just a regular green glove, and I thought I would actually put the effort in. <laughs> And I bought a proper Grinch fluffy glove. And I thought this would look better. Because obviously I thought 
the steps before this were going to look really good and they ended up not looking very good but still. So I just stuffed this Grinch glove with old packaging paper and then hot glued it to the short end of this cardboard tube. Now it was just time to cover this entire thing in red fabric and I would like to explain what I'm actually doing here but I don't fully understand myself what I'm actually doing here. There was no method, there was no technique, it was just me trying my best to cut and stick some red fabric to this cardboard tube. Didn't have a plan, didn't know what was happening happening, kind of went into a trance and just tried to get it on. That's that's all. That's that's what was going through my brain. And after a while, this is what it was looking like. And to be fair, I'm quite impressed that it doesn't look that bad. I thought it was going to look way worse than this. This is sheer luck that it got to this point. Like you won't see us kind of having like a little panic attack off camera while I'm trying to figure out how to make this, but I had no idea. I know I say I wing stuff a lot, but this was just pure winging it. I didn't know what I was doing. But the final step was just to attach a bauble to the gloves, and I just did this with hot glue. So we have expectation. And reality. And I don't think mine looks as neat or as nice as theirs. Mine looks incredibly messy. And I've just realised I forgot to add some white fluff around the collar. I completely missed that bit off. I did I did hem the fabric though with hot glue. Look at that. That's a sharp line. That is a completely sharp, hemmed, hot glued bit of fabric. Like, well done me. If I turn it around, you're gonna get a shock. Like, look at the state of this. <laughs> Look at the state, look at look how bad that is. Look how bad it is. But my theory is, is that it's gonna hang on a wall, so you're not gonna see that. It's gonna look like that. And to be fair, mine looks more like fabric. Mine looks more like a piece of clothing, whereas theirs doesn't. Theirs looks more like a tube. So I feel like mine has some advantages over theirs, but it still, it still doesn't look as nice as theirs at all. And this little Grinch hand ornament cost me about 16 pound. And to be fair, I think you get a lot of decoration for how much money you've spent. It's just, I don't know whether I like it or not. I don't. I just don't love it. I really don't. But but it it it's, it it just it is what it is. But I, I tried and I found it way more complicated than I thought I was going to. I thought this was going to be so easy to make, and it turns out it's not. Okay, so next up, I thought we would try the little milk bottle scene. And for this, I just bought a regular glass milk bottle. I also pre-cut a circular square shape of paper out, which is going to act as the window into this glass bottle. And just popped some tape on that and then stuck it to the surface of the bottle. I then got a sponge with some white acrylic paint and covered the entire bottle with white acrylic paint. And then while the paint was still wet, I removed the piece of paper to reveal a lovely little window inside the glass bottle. And then just popped that to one side to let it dry. So I've got my little bottle here. And I think that's worked really well actually. I think that was a really really good idea. I'm, I'm surprised I thought of it. Now I was trying to figure out how to get the stuff inside the bottle and I was thinking I might use like a fishing line and just kind of like hook the decorations on and stick them in like that. But I thought it's gonna go wrong. I know it's gonna go wrong and it was kind of my way of trying to DIY it rather than think or get something that's actually gonna work. So instead I bought this. The biggest pair of tweezers you've ever seen in your life. Apparently these are for terrariums. I don't understand why. I don't know what you do with them. But look at them. Absolutely huge. And this is going to be perfect because I should be able to latch onto my ornament and stick them into place and then release. That's the idea. If this doesn't work, I'll be shocked because my brain actually kicked in and I thought of a really good idea. So I've got my little snowman here. He obviously looks very, very different to theirs, but I don't know where they bought their snowman from. So I'm just going to put some hot glue onto here and then hopefully these tweezers are going to work. I'm just going to grab you by the head. This is still going to be very tricky. Oh my God. Ah, oh, it's stuck to his... No! Ah, oh, this is going to be ridiculously tricky. Right, here we go. Well, it's stuck in. I didn't. I didn't get any control over that at all. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, glued it perfect. No way! I got it perfectly in. I didn't have any control over that. Everything just happened. It was very quick. Okay, great. Ah, oh, fab. I'm off to a good start. So now I want to attach my what you call it, a lamppost. Couldn't think of the word. I assume this is what they use for like building them ships in bottles. These big tweezers. We're going in for it. See what happens. <laughs> I think I've got it. Okay. That, that worked well. Okay, good. I've got that in place. This is way too fiddly for someone like me. We're after a good start. I just need to get a Christmas tree in and then it's all okay. I want you about... I didn't want you there. Oh, it's too late. You're stuck. 
Ah, well, you're gonna have to go there. All right, that doesn't that doesn't look too bad, actually. I can't tell whether their milk bottle's bigger than mine, or their stuff is even smaller than mine, but my stuff's completely off scale. But I've got my little collection of ornaments inside. Also, I bought these specifically for that. I've only used it three times, and these cost me about 20 pounds. How ridiculous is that? I think it was 20 quid for a pair of these. So expensive. They'll come in handy, though. I'll use these again at some point. I'll, ma I'll make sure I use them again if I've spent that much money. Right, and then I just want to add some fake snow and I'm not gonna glue this on or anything and it doesn't matter if it gets on top of any of the decorations because well it'll fall off eventually and it'll make it look quite snowy oh my god you know what mine actually looks really good I'm so shocked but it looks really really good it looks exactly like theirs and then I've got some little lights and we'll pop these inside too the only issue is I don't know what they did with their battery pack so that battery pack's far too big to stick in the lid I might have to stick it kind of around the back I think they just like threaded theirs in and just let them go where wherever they wanted to go. And then pop my lid back on. So we have expectation. And reality. How ridiculously cute is that? I think I've done a really, really good job with this one. I'm kind of shocked I've managed to do this because it is something I really struggle with, like tiny little miniatures. Like, look at that scene. That is, that's almost perfect. I think that's a really good idea. I'm actually, I'm proper into that one. So this cost me about seven pounds and 45 pence. However, if you include the massive pair of tweezers that I had to buy, it obviously cost an extra 20 pound. I'm sure these did cost me 20 pound. Let me just check. Yeah, they cost me 19 pounds and 95 pence but I got a pair of two. One of them looks a bit different to this. So in theory, this cost me 10 pounds. I'm kind of happy I've invested in a long pair of tweezers because I know I'll use these again at some point. That is a lie. Okay, I think we'll move on to the little cupcake Christmas decoration thing. And for this, I bought a gold colored cupcake paper stand thing. I don't really know what you call them. And a polystyrene ball and just hot glued them together. Next up, I got a bit of red and white twine, created a loop with it, and then jammed it into the polystyrene and hot glued it into place. I then covered the entire polystyrene ball in PVA glue, sprinkled an absolute ton of fake snow onto the surface of this PVA glue, and then just put that to one side to let it dry. And I bought some red beads for the cherry on the top of this little cake. Unfortunately, the beads that I bought online were absolutely tiny. They were way smaller than I thought they were going to be. So to compensate, I decided to hot glue three of these little red beads to the top of my little cupcake. So we have expectation. And reality, and I don't think mine looks particularly great. I don't think mine looks as good as theirs. I also think mine's like really out of proportion. The ball is somehow too big and too small at the same time, because if I turn this around, I've had to kind of stick all of this foil together because it was just kind of sagging and bagging out. So I don't understand. Maybe I should have cut the ball in half. That might have actually made, oh, uh, you know what? That's probably what they've done. They've probably cut the ball in half or at least chopped it down a bit. I didn't even think of that. I think that's what they've done. It's just dawned on us now that I could have cut the ball further down. Never mind. I've made like a, a really just ugly version of what theirs is. But I didn't use all the materials that I bought for this. So I reckon in total this probably cost as a pound, which it's it's not too bad. Obviously, I spent way more money on materials, but I've only used like a pound's worth of them. If you're going to make this though, cut the ball down. I think that's where I've definitely gone wrong with this one. Okay, so I think I'll try the wreath next. And I've just brought this twisty vine stuff and I've realized they've got like proper big sticks. I was going to cheat and just buy like a wreath base and do it that way. But then I was like, oh no, I'll put the effort in. And now I'm regretting it. Will this be strong enough for a wreath? I suppose if I just go, what even is this? It's making such a mess. It's fine, we'll figure this out. It's an issue, I can't tell how big they've made theirs. I think theirs is only about that big. So you know what, I'm gonna cut that off. Bit of twine. All this is gonna be hidden, so it's okay. I'll just tie that off to keep that in place. And then I'm thinking, shall I double it up? Because uh, like that's like so flimsy. I'm gonna add a second row of this stuff. I'm not a fan of whatever this is. Okay, and then add some more twine along that bit. And just a reminder to everyone watching, I do all of this without instructions. Okay, that's the whole point. It's a challenge. In case anyone's screaming at the tellies or their phones or their computers. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do this. Like, why did I decide to start this series where I made things not knowing how to make them. I don't know. I thought it would be fun. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more on this side just to keep that bit in place. Okay, that's a lot stronger. It's still quite flimsy, but it's better than it was. Sweep all of that to one side. 
and I'll deal with it later. I think the best thing to do first would be oranges. So I bought myself a big bag of dried oranges, not realizing that I actually have lots of dried oranges already in the studio. That's what happens when you've got so much stuff. You forget what you actually have and you don't realize what you don't have. And you think you have things, but you don't have them. And you think you don't have things and then you end up with double or triple the things that you didn't think you had in the first place. But again, I live by the motto of I'd rather have too much and extra things than not have enough. So I've got lots and lots of oranges now. Right, so I'm just going to hot glue these onto here, I think. I definitely think it would have been easier or nicer to have, like, sticks. I don't I don't understand where they got theirs from, though. That's the issue. These aren't sticking very well to this. They're going to stay on, but they're just they're barely going to stay on. All of these oranges are going to literally be hanging on by a thread. <laughs> Okay, I think that's enough oranges. The fact that I got these oranges stuck on is an absolute miracle, it really is. Okay, so it looks like they've got a bit of burlap on the top. And I think they've done it in a ribbon, but I'm just gonna try and cut a little bit of this off and try and create like some sort of bow. I think something like this as well, you want it to be quite like rustic, don't you? You don't want it to look perfect. Tie that into some sort of rough bow. And then they have a little wooden star on the top. I think I'm gonna add more than one because mine are smaller than theirs. Okay, and then down the side, they've got some, like, little foliage stuff. Should I just thread mine through? I'm just wondering if I can just, like, attach it like that, rather than having to hot glue it. I know theirs didn't have berries on, but mine's going to have berries. I feel like I'm definitely making this my own now. I don't think I'm following theirs at all. But I noticed they had some sort of gold up at the top, and I've still got some of these poinsettia things, so I might just stick some of these on. And I do have a confession to make. They have little bells hanging down from theirs, which look really nice. And I did buy some bells. However, my bells are absolutely tiny. I don't really see the point of putting them on, because you, well, you're barely going to even see them hanging down. You know what? I think I might be done. I kind of like mine how it is. I don't want to add too much to it. Let me have a look. Oh, I don't love it, actually. No, it needs, it needs some more stuff on it. It's, it's too bare. Okay, so I found some of these things in the studio, and I'm going to hot glue that to the other side, because it, it's just, it's far too bare. In fact, I might just be able to hook these on. Okay, I think I might be done. So we have expectation. And reality. And... I don't think mine looks too bad. I think it looks similar to theirs. The only issue with mine is the fact that it is so poorly made. If you hung this on your door and a gust of winter wind blew this off the door, it's all gonna fall apart. And I have a feeling this cost me a lot of money to make as well. I'm just pricing everything up. And you know why I thought these were going to be full-size bells? Because believe it or not, I paid over £8 for them. Over £8. And look how small they are. I thought I was getting a bargain because £8 for some normal-sized bells. But eight quid for these? Like, I don't think. So if we take away the cost of the bells, I think this wreath cost me about £24. Which, to be fair, I don't think is too bad. I thought it was going to cost more than that. And yeah, it's not too bad. Just be, just be very careful with it. You have to definitely handle it with care. Okay, so moving on to the final Christmas craft project, and that's of course going to be the ball and pin snowman. So I just bought this old ball and pin online, and it's in a pretty bad condition, but it doesn't really matter. It's going to get painted over and decorated, so you're not going to see any of that. And all I did was just spray painted it with a very, very thick coat of white spray paint. And I did have a little audience with us who were watching me paint this ball and pin. I don't know their names, but these are my neighbours. They're just horses. Lots and lots of horses. Once the ball and pin was dry, I decided to paint the face on, start Starting with the orange for the cheeks and just applied that with a little sponge and then I drew some eyes on and a mouth with a sharpie. Next up was the little carrot nose and some pupils for the eyes. I also need to make a little scarf for this ball and pin so I just took a tartan scarf that I bought online and cut that down to size and then I cut on each side of the scarf a little frilly edge just to make it look a little bit more like a scarf and tied it around the ball and pin's neck. I didn't glue it or anything like that because I didn't see the point so it was just kind of placed on. Next up I decided to try and make a hat for this ball and pin and honestly I can't really explain again what I'm actually doing in this but I'm just hacking away at a piece of fabric and hot gluing it to the ball and pin's head and just trying to make some sort of hat and I finished it off with a little bit of the tartan scarf and I think it kind of looks like a hat but not really a hat. Next up I just hot glued some Christmas buttons to the torso of the ball and pin and finally added some foliage to the hat. So we have expectation and reality and I know mine doesn't look 
exactly like the original. But surprisingly, I actually like mine. I think mine looks really fun. I don't know whether it's just me, but I think mine looks a bit like a chimney sweep. I think it's the, the weird hat that I've made that doesn't, it doesn't look like a hat at all. It's just a bit of fabric stuck on the head. I'm getting like a proper scary, creepy demon vibe from it but also like a chimney sweep. I don't know whether anyone else can see that. I think mine's actually got more character than the original. And surprisingly, I don't think this actually cost me that much money. So in total, this cost me about 18 pounds. And I think that's 18 pounds well spent. I actually think it's a really nice little ornament. So I think that just about does it for today's Christmas special of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to let me know which Christmas craft project was your favorite and something you would kind of do. I think a lot of yous would do a way better job at the wreath than I did. I don't know what happened with that, but I don't know. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. And I'll see you on Friday for what I'm hoping is going to be a tasty video, but I can only imagine it's going to be pretty gross. See what happens with that. I haven't recorded it yet or anything, but I can't imagine I'm going to be very satisfied.